This is sold, isn't it? Salvage expert Drew Pritchard travels far and wide to keep his warehouse in North Wales full of fresh and interesting stock. The polished radiators can go in there as well now. We've got loads more room in here now. This time, he and T are heading into new territory on a week's trip to the Isle of Man. He's taking a risk as it's a long journey for an uncertain payoff. It's just over an hour's drive east to the Liverpool ferry port, followed by a two-hour, 45-minute ride on the Irish Sea to the island's capital, Douglas. What are we actually going to find here? I've no idea, but, I mean, you can already see some really old housing stock there, so you never know. And it's supporting two salvage yards on that island, so there's got to be something. So I've never been here, but then again, I've never known anybody else to ever be here. Said, oh, I'm just off to the Isle of Man buying antiques. No, I've never heard it, so... Who knows? The Isle of Man has 86,000 residents living in small towns and villages that dot the countryside. The island is 33 miles long and 13 miles wide. It's a crown dependency with its own government, thriving tourism industry and rich cultural history. The Celts were among its first inhabitants and its name is said to come from the Celtic sea god, Mananon, who protected the island from invaders by shrouding it in mist. Today, it's famous for a particular event. The TT is one of the most prestigious motorbike races in the world and a huge draw for the island, attracting more than 30,000 tourists each year. The top riders cover 226 miles. That's six hair-raising laps around the island on public roads. Drew will be travelling some of the course in his search for treasures. Sun's come out. I know, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Weekend after the TT. Still loads of bikers around. Yeah. Are you going to make me do some work? You haven't started yet, to be perfectly honest with you. It's just getting warmed up. Drew's first port of call is just 10 minutes south of Douglas in Santon. A scenic area set in low hills that slope towards the coast. We're off to a museum, which ah. can prove problematic. Yeah, they normally don't want to part with the good stuff, do they? But it's OK. okay. It's a motorbike museum, so it's going to be fun. We're we just going to play with motorbikes all yeah. day. <laughs> Murray's Motorcycle Museum is right on the TT course. Its owner, Peter Murray, has lived on the island for over 60 years and is a lifelong motorcycle collector. He took over the museum from his dad, who started the business in the 1950s. It's the way I dream of a motorcycle museum to be. A bit of everything, and it's not polish. You don't smell polish here, you smell oil. It looks like a motorcycle shop rather than a museum. So I've got bits of furniture and stuff like that that I think he might be interested in. We'll have a go at that and see what it we can do a deal. Oh, here we go. Murray's. Murray's Motorbike Museum. Oh, look at that. Got a little 50cc kid's bike. Little crosser. Always wanted one of them. Do you reckon you let me have a go? Hello, hello. How are you doing? Drew, how are you? Fine, I'm thank T. you. How are you? Are you all right? Fantastic. I can't tell you how much I've been looking forward to this, to be honest with you. Good man. Is this here to, to play on? This is to play on, and the children and even adults have the photographs oh, taken on that. Really? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Big you... fella like that can have a sit <laughs> on Really? It. What could possibly go wrong? Turning back the clock and kiddy again. <laughs> <laughs> Steady. Are you putting a cheeky bit in? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, I want to get inside and see the museum. Stop messing oh. about. Come on in. Let's have a look. Oh, yes, now you're talking. Oh, brings yeah. back a lot of memory seeing mm. these bikes. Oh, Greaves. No way. I haven't seen one of these since I was a kid. I burnt my leg uh, on there. I've the, still got a mark on the inside of my leg. They all do. From there. And the Scott there. Yeah. God, look at the wear on that. Oh, that's one of the old ones. Murray's Motorcycle Museum is fantastic. It's got barn finds through to race bikes from the 90s all the way back to probably 1900, some of the stuff in here. Now, that, that takes me back. The Inter? Yeah. yeah. We had a few of these in the house. Mm. 
When I was a child, I was brought up around my father's collection of motorbikes, which was vast. That, I, I remember sitting having my breakfast, and there was one of those without the forks and the wheels on it sitting yeah. in front of me on the kitchen table yeah. while my dad was coach line in the tank. All of these bikes have got memories for me. The smell, the feel, and just the whole jumble of it all I adore. So how many bikes have we got total in the collection? I never count, honestly. It's probably best. You yeah. don't, do you? What's your favourite? If I was, like, sold up and the one I want, uh, I would keep would be the uh, outfit. Really? And I'll tell you why. Uh, Dad and I bought that one, a brand new oh, 21 Triumph, for £100. <laughs> <laughs> You're joking. The only thing that's uh, not original on this is tyres, tube, air, oil and petrol, everything else is 100%. The seat is... Look, at there's no wear or anything on it, is there? This thing was never used. This was a brand-new 1920s bike when they found it. Have a sit on it. Just please. So what would it cost today? It's, I know it's priceless to you, and uh, I, you know, but what do you reckon it's worth? Mm, 70. Fantastic. And this is the one... I, I, well, after that story, oh, well, I'll keep it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. It's quite a collection. Quite a collection. What's that... that there's something in here that I buy. These chairs. That chair is TT history. Is it? They come out of the old timekeeper's box. But they've got the maker's mark here. Yeah. And they're made by High Wickham. There, see? This is what I would term a draftsman's chair. And I have, at the moment, four or five of these chairs in stock. I love them. But that was in a timekeeper's booth. Ergo, it's not for sale. No, sir. All no. right, fair enough. It's a bit of history. OK. Unfortunately, you'll come across that word, no. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. You as long as we have him That's fun okay. talking. That's OK. Buying from a museum of any type, particularly a private museum, is difficult. And if I don't walk away with anything, I don't. I'm having a great time anyway. But we'll just see how, what happens. So where's next? You've got an upstairs. Upstairs. Yeah? Let's go upstairs. Come on in here and let's see what we've got in here. Some of these pictures are brilliant, aren't they? Ah, oh, I can see bits already. Plenty of old leathers. I do love a good leather jacket if there's an early one. Oh, what's that? Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Lovely piece of automobile clothing. Very nice. This leather driving coat is from the early 20th century, when British bicycle manufacturers first started making motorbikes, and the new sport of motorcycle racing emerged. Despite its age, it's in excellent condition and could fetch about £400. Cars and motorbikes, that could be a late... Oh, there they are. Yeah. Fits you. Fits you, perfect. That's lovely. I've not seen this type before, and it looks quite early, and it's got a really nice sort of double-button breast arrangement right all the way down the front. Very, very supple, pale brown leather, long and in nice nick. Are you interested? Possibly. What sort of money? You'll have to guide me on this one. Make me. Do I want that? It's a nice early one. Yeah, I do, actually. I think it's really beautiful. 60 quid. It's yours. Thank you and for being... And that's a good... That's... And thank you for being a gentleman, cos <laughs> I wouldn't have a clue. Oh, I'm really pleased with that. Really good pleased man. with that. Good man, as long as you're happy no, and I'm happy. No, I am happy, happy with that, Peter. Marvellous. Yeah. You've got all sorts in here, then. What else have we got? That's of interest. Is it broken? No. Is it all right, is it? Because the glass breaks on these and then they're worth nothing. No. That's not bad. Mirror back? Yes. Yeah. Quite a basic one. Still, always ask for them. Good man. Rough. But the glass is there. Broken mirror. Uh, in that condition... Um, that condition, that condition, that condition. Condition, 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 condition. Seventy-five pound. We're doing well here. Eh? Yep, that's fine. I'm being, I'm being fair. I'm being fair. We're having a good day. We are. The sun's <laughs> shining and everybody's happy. Right, where's next? We've got another one to look at. Yeah, let's have a look in here. Well, that was, that was good. We've done well so far. Come on in, boys. Oh dear. 
Oh, now you're talking. So you don't really get in here very often. This isn't open to the public, obviously. No, no, no. Museums are brilliant because you chaps are always squirrelling stuff away. Well, the squirrels, you can't help it, can you? You know what this is, T? Um, something to do... It's compact, so something to do with... Shipping or caravans? Shipping. Or... In the early 1900s, washstands like this were common in passenger ships' cabins. This one, made of tropical hardwood with bronze fittings, still has its original mirror, sink, soap trays and tin wastewater canister. Restored, it's worth about £1,200. Well, it's for sale if, you, if you're interested. I think it's down to price. Go on, then. I think it's down to price. That's all it is, because I'm not mad keen to own it. Go on, then. Architectural salvage expert Drew Pritchard is on a shopping trip to the Isle of Man off the northwest coast of England in the Irish Sea. Both Drew and T have been revelling in its rich motorcycle history. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> They're having a ball at Murray's Motorcycle Museum. Briefs? No way, I haven't seen one of these since I was a kid. But in an upstairs storage room, Drew and owner Peter Murray have yet to agree to a price for this antique washstand from a ship. Go on, then. Oh, all I see is work. Um, Breathe heavy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a low bid. Go on. 150 quid. 60, 160. Yeah, I'm not happy with it. You sure? Good man. Happy. I'm happy, cos you're happy. For that to be attractive to me, it had to be the right price. It is, because there's work to do. It needs a full French polish all over. The mirror's got to come off and be re-glued, and, and the bottom's come off it. Um, apart from that, that's, that's ready to go, and there's profit in that. Super stuff. That's a nice piece, that. This 1930s military spotlight is in excellent condition with original phosphor bronze frame, copper fittings, lens and reflector plate. With a quick polish, it could sell for about £600. And it's complete and undamaged. These were things that you'd use every day, all day. So there's always, like, the wing nuts are broken or the lens is broken or it's scratched or it's been overpainted time and time again. This one hasn't. This one's had a really easy life and it's in beautiful condition. Mm. You'd make a bob or two on that. I, I, I'd, I'd like to. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I'll play the violin <laughs> while you're thinking about it. What do you think? Three? You'll make money on three. I was, I was looking at paying 250 but you've been fair with everything else. Good man. For 300 pounds, we'll have that. There's still a profit in it because there's very little work to do to it. Um, but he's been fair, so let's give him one back. It's always good to buy the best of something. That's pretty damn good. The more old bikes down here as well. Hang on, hang on. Where to get that? Let's pick it up. Oh, that's lovely. This cast-iron sailor was a Royal Navy donation box. It's a rare find, dating to the late 19th century. It needs extensive restoration, but once repaired, it could be worth around £1,000. And it's just got it all. It's got history, originality, original paint. I've never seen one. I've only read about them. Oh, no. I know they're rare. It's just got it... It couldn't be more me. I've got to ask, what do you want for him? You make me offer on that one. I'm, it, I'm guessing. Go on. 450. I'm guessing. I've not owned one ever. I've never owned one. I've never been offered one. I've only read about them. Six. I mean, you ain't going to pick them up every day, are you? 
And you learn on that. You know what? I don't know. They are sick. <laughs> <laughs> I no, made you moan. I way you did that. <laughs> I just, every now and again, you just, I don't know what, I don't want to think about it. I just want to buy it. You're and happy. I'm very happy. Thank you. <laughs> very, That's very happy. All That's about. made my day. That's absolutely made. The other stuff is making wages. This has made my day. There you are. That's I, just superb. I walked past that when we were going to it. I flicked it. I thought, let's cast. You must, why is Drew not seen that? And then I thought, well, you must have seen it. So I, was I didn't say anything. I, just, I was studying. I was studying, and I was looking, and I only went back over because I thought, oh, that's a Lambretta wheel. It's the only reason I went back over. What? Well, and then, you... and then I just saw his face sticking out. I thought you must have seen him. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Next time, that'll teach me. Be careful, this little chap. Little chap. Yeah, quite heavy. The feeling of finding something like that. It makes the job worth doing. I might buy 30 or 40 things before I get that special oomph, that feeling, that rush that you get when you find something that good. I'm so lucky to do what I do for the very reason of finding that piece. Give it a good air in, I think. Not bad. It's not bad at all, that. Coming up. They are cuckoo. Superb. Yeah, a nice day. Great day. Really enjoyed Sun it. Sun shining. Sun shining, old bikes and a bit of antiques. Oh, I've been fully enjoyed it. We've had great crack and uh, done a bit of business. Nice day and everybody's happy. We need to pop that little motorbike in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Peter, thank you. It's been a thank pleasure. You. Really, really enjoyed it. Thank I you so much. I enjoyed it, like the sunshine. Thank you. Nice <laughs> to meet thank you. Thank you very much. But you still want to shave. <laughs> <laughs> Good yeah. luck, Jeff. See you. Thank you. Well, that brilliant. It was. And I got to ride that little motorbike. Oh, loved it. I, there, there's nothing about today I didn't like. All of the pieces have got money in them. I'm hoping. The little cast iron fella has as well. Is it open, Sig? Yeah. After a good night's rest at a hotel on the prom in Douglas. It's only a few minutes' drive to a salvage yard on the edge of town. Today we're off to uh, Manx Architectural Salvage. Uh, meet a couple of business partners, two blokes, and they are going to show us around their yard they've just moved into very recently. I'm Lee Mayers. And I'm Richard Mellywish, and we're at uh, Manx Architectural Salvage in Peel Road in Douglas. We do a good selection of fireplaces, um, old cast iron radiators, the odd bit of furniture. Anything that interests us and may interest the public as well. I'll be interested to see this. It's a salvage yard on an island I didn't think was big enough to support a salvage yard. What is it, 30 miles by 15 yeah, miles? It's not big, is it? Hopefully rich pickings. The best thing about this is, is the quality of the stock from the 19th century, the housing stock, is high. So that means they're going to have filled all of these houses with good quality pieces in the day. And it being an island, it won't have gone far. Perfect. Yeah, that's the place. Lovely job. I'm looking for old, top of the line. That's what I'm after. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Uh, Lee, Richard. Yeah, yeah I'm Richard. I'm Lee. Lee. Nice Richard, how you doing? Hi, Drew. Nice to meet nice you. Hi. 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 Nice hello. to see you. How are you doing? So this is uh, Manx Architectural Salvage. Salvage. Yeah. OK. So you know, how long have you been here? Here, since January the 10th, but on the island and another yard since four or five years ago. Does everything have to get brought in, or do, are no, you salvaging no, from no, the island? No, it's all from the island, or most of it is. Occasionally, we have to go across and get stuff. Yeah. But 95% is off the island, on so the island rather. A lot of it Victorian as well. Uh, yeah, there was a big building boom, yeah. 1880s. Yeah. This, this is all the housing that. stock that we're in the middle yeah, of here. Yeah, all looks the same, yeah. all built at the same time, all had the same sort of stuff in. Okay. All been stripped out in the 60s and chucked away. And people are now pulling back. Yeah. Well, you've got a big mix of everything, really, from yeah. rare dosses all the way through to <coughs> horns, actually, which I, uh, I quite like the look of those over there. I buy a lot of these. It's a shame they've drilled the 
the shield at the back. Yeah. So, I mean, is it cheaper out here to buy out here or not? <laughs> You'll find out. <laughs> I've still got skin on it. Ew. It's quite good, though. Yeah. It's quite sort of devilish looking. Yeah, yeah. Isn't yeah. It? I tell you, who'd yeah. really like it back in the yard? Enzo. Enzo would be yeah. a <laughs> Mounted skulls were popular decorative items in Victorian country homes. This goat's head, circa 1900, is mounted on an oak shield and is in excellent condition. On the mainland, it could fetch about 180 pounds. So it's, this one's 50 quid. So that's very good value, to be honest with you guys. Yep. Yep. There you go. Do you have a trade price or not? Go on. What? I don't know. 40 quid? Yeah. Go on then. Yeah, there you go. That's, see, that's, that's, um, that's, a, that's a good buy. Just because that shape on the side there is quite good, isn't it? First deal was good, because I've started to know a few things are priced. They've only just moved in, so not everything's priced. They're priced at £50. That's a great price for those, you know? I can't buy them for that on the mainland. So immediately, I'm finding things that are cheaper to buy out here. That's what I was hoping for. The other thing I saw immediately was the urn there, that one. I also spot what I think is an original Andrew Handy side of Derby urn. Just need to ascertain whether or not it's a real one or not. It certainly looks it. In the Victorian era, Andrew Handyside and Company made everything from small garden ornaments to public post boxes and bridges. This urn dates to the late 19th century, and with such quality casting, could fetch about £500. What sort of money is he? Uh, I'll... For you, I'll do it for 120. Ace salvager Drew Pritchard is on the sunny Isle of Man, where he's made a successful visit to a motorbike museum. The other stuff is making wages. This has made my day. At a salvage yard in the capital, Douglas, he's made a quick deal on this mounted goat skull. It's quite good, though. Yeah, it's quite sort of devilish looking. Yeah, isn't yeah. it? And now he's hoping to buy this 19th century urn, worth about £500. 120. 120. Salt. Deal. So I have that. OK, excellent. Thank you very much. Shame you haven't got the other one. I know. I know. We, we, the pencils yeah. for them. <coughs> yeah. It's not a big one at all. You know, I've had them sort of this size. They're the ones I really like. Uh, and there's no pedestal. But there's no cracks, there's no welding, and it's complete and original. Quite a find. Well, that's a good start, isn't it? It is. Yep. We haven't, we haven't, we haven't got, really got that far. Yeah, yeah. Yep, excellent. <laughs> so what have you got? You've got upstairs and downstairs here. Yeah, um, up, you've, upstairs is a bit of lighting. Bit of lighting. Some, uh, we'll do that later. Some, some etched glass up there is quite nice. OK. With two fantastic deals quickly sealed, Drew is eager for more. Where did this come from? It just happened to be an shipment of Yorkstone that uh, arrived and there was no way we were going to lay it, so no, it's we nice. decided to use it as a tabletop. Fireplace tablet. <laughs> That's actually come from my house. Nice day. Good colour. <coughs> what about this one here? Yes. Yeah, that, that, that's mm. nice, Drew. So there are mint and tiles in them. Yeah. That's come out of a, a house in um, the Isle of Man. I've bought and sold thousands of fireplaces over the years. This is Thomas Jekyll, one of my absolute favourites. His designs uh, and the aesthetic movement, taste and manner uh, are something that really strike a chord with me and they're just so beautiful. And what this has the bonus of having is two things. It's called a guillotine grate. It still has that in there, intact. And it also has all its original Minton tiles. Thomas Jekyll was a renowned ironworks designer of the Victorian era. This surround features ceramic tiles designed by British artist John Moyer Smith and made by Minton's, another notable name. It's in superb condition and could sell for about £2,000. I like that. How much is that? <clears throat> well, Minton tiles, three, six, twelve Minton tiles. What are they, 20 quid each? 240? 240. Okay. A couple hundred quid by it? 
Meet in the middle, 220? Yeah, that's yeah. still. Okay. Cool. Great. Happy with that. Well, I'd like to have a look at the lighting up there. Yeah, please do. Possible. How do we get up there? This way. <laughs> Great building. It is fantastic it's building. Cool. Ah, lighting. One of my favourite things. Again, this is all salvaged off the island then as well. Yep. Yep. Alabaster. Yep. Because there's another one here. Strange to find so many in one place. You don't usually see that many of them. These plafonnier light fittings date to the 1920s and with a bulb in the centre, cast a lovely glow through the translucent alabaster. They're worth about £300 each. Lighting is a very big part of my business. They've got a lot of stuff up here. And judging by what I've just seen, I want to have a quick look around at everything before we start doing deals, because I'm going to bundle a big pile of stuff together. These are opalines. Yeah, not the same. We've spent hours and hours and hours doing these up. <coughs> That sounds expensive. It, well, I'm coming to that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we've we had them up for a huge amount. I think 305 originally. I can't get near it. Most I can pay is 175 each. But so no, I'm think happy to I'm, walk away. I'd rather leave you to get your I profit think on we'll them. We'll probably leave that. It's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not old. Original 1960 glass ones. Yeah, vitrolite. Yeah, that's cool. It's back to these alabaster then, really. I'm excited about the alabasters because I'm always looking for them. They don't turn up often enough for me to to buy those. What I'd like to take is that one with that, that one, and those two there. So what I'm looking at is a collection of four Lafonnier light fittings. Excellent, because these never really went out of fashion, but now I think that's very, very chic. Chandelier hook fittings with chain 55 quid. £75 for that one. So what's the total? £95, So, so 220 I think so. OK, yeah. Yeah? yeah. He says yes. Deal. He yeah. did that deal without you, then. I know. <laughs> Is that all right? Because I had that one. <laughs> wages. If you hear me shouting at him, you do. <laughs> no, it's fine. Fine. It's just making sure there's no cracks in there. Those are worth hundreds of pounds, not 55 pounds. Um, in the right place, they will achieve extremely good money because they tick all the boxes, condition being number one. I'll come back, leave we'll them now. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, come back yeah. and get them in a sec. The lights we've had for a year or so, Drew knows they're fashionable. The fashion hasn't quite got to the Isle of Man. So, yes, they've been sitting there waiting for him. It feels great that we've sold some items. Here we go. It gives people on the island a bit more of an insight of what these things are actually worth and, and a little bit of the history about them, and Drew seems to know quite a lot. Near something being lifted, then. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how you managed that. I've bought some things with loads of meat on the bone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I can find the same quality, but the same sort of money, that's retail prices in there. Um, we're going to have a great week. Might end up hiring another van. Thanks, mate. Very nice to see you through. Good luck, guys. Yeah, Thank you. Have a good, have a good time, time on the island. Will do. Will do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. See you later. Cheers. Safe journey back. I really like the island, man. Yeah? It's great. It's very, very good value. It would appear you're getting the pick of things that people haven't looked at before. And they're making a profit on that. I'm paying them nearly ticket price. If they can turn a profit on that, I will, I will buy that off them all day long. Drew and T have one more stop to make on the northwest side of the island near the village of Kirk Michael. Nestled in the hills and surrounded by farmland. So, another sunny day on the Isle of Man. Yep, and we're off to meet a guy called Spud Murphy. He's a furniture restorer, he's an antique dealer, and they do bespoke joinery work as well for furniture. And he works from home, so he's got a little farmstead thing that uh, he works from. 
Alan Spud Murphy came to the island from Northern Ireland 30 years ago. His father-in-law worked in furniture restoration and Spud soon joined the family business. Our core business is uh, restored country furniture, pine furniture, oak, mahogany, that kind of thing. But we make a lot of furniture from reclaimed timber and we recycle things, find things and try and make them into something different. So we still haven't found anything specific to the island, really, have we? No. Um, I hold out a bit of hope for today, though. But I'm not sure it could just be all strip pine furniture. It's quite traditional taste on the island. There's a limited number of people who are interested in the more unusual, unrestored things. There might well be stuff here that Drew will like. Then there's the question of how much he wants to pay for it as well, which will be an interesting moment. That's it. There you go. Lower Bishop's Court Farm Pinewood Furniture Studio. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Great spot. Hello. 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 Hey. Pleased to meet you. Drew, how are you? How are you? Hi, I'm T. T. How are you doing? Yeah. What a brilliant setup. Well, thank this you. This is great. Here we have our showrooms in here yeah. and all our sheds for storage of all the yeah. unrestored stuff. I need something like this. It's uh, ideal. Drew's having showroom envy, I think. I have got showroom envy. <laughs> oh, it's a perfect, it's perfect setup. So where are we off to first? I'd like to see sort of unrestored first, if possible. And there's unrestored stuff in there, and uh, these sheds over here are full of unrestored stuff as so well. So what's best start over here? Yeah, possibly over there. Right, yeah. Let's have a look then. This is our workshop area. Loads of mostly small chairs and stuff upstairs. Health and safety conscious staircase, but... Oh, don't worry. We're not that fussed. This I like. Well, that's interesting with the Manx symbol. You've got another one of those there I've as well. got another one. I was looking for that, yeah. There's, there's okay. two there. Yeah. 1870s. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, there was, there was loads of them. You see that they pop up on the island from time to time. Oh, OK. They're, they're around the place. Interesting. Cricket tables. Yeah. I like. Have you got any with them um, old painted? Nothing complete, no. No, we're painted. With cricket tables? Three legs. Three legs. Uh, yeah. Do you know why they've got three legs? So they don't wall. Yeah, so they've got... Because they're made for uneven floors. Yeah. Mm. These are nice. Tell us a bit more about these. They came, one of our, our very early house clearances, farm clearances in the north of the island, and they came from uh, an old farm. And uh, there's a couple of these, one in the museum, the Manx Museum. I've never seen this before, this no, style. No, it's very uh, localised. I just fall in love with a pair of chairs. I am just besotted with these things. I think they're wonderful. It's got all the things that I like wrapped in one piece. This style of open armchair with its distinctive X-shaped back is unique to the island. These two date to about 1850 and still have the original painted finish. They're a rare find, worth about £600 each. They've got that sort of folk art feel to them yeah, as well, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, they have. They're, uh... They're very me. Mm. So how much are those going to be, Spud? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Architectural salvage expert Drew Pritchard has found a little piece of heaven at this furniture studio on a farmstead on the Isle of Man. Perfect setup. And he's just discovered the perfect pair of chairs. Made on the island in the 19th century, but he has no idea what Spud Murphy's selling price will be. How much are those going to be, Spud? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how much work is to do to those. That's a lot. That's not That's a the lot. issue for me. It's, um... They're not quite a pair. They're obviously just no, been knocked up, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're yeah. Uh, journeyman joiner stuff. Yeah. Um, and slightly different colour. Yeah. I couldn't really let those go with less than about 150 a piece because they're just special. And the local chairs, you know, for me, that's that's the appeal. Cause... God, I, I, I absolutely adore them. Mm. Sold. Oh, thank you. They're totally untouched. They're just exciting, they're interesting, they're different, they are incredibly appealing to look at, and they'll restore well. Just blown away by them, I think they're absolutely wonderful. They're one of the nicest things I've found for ages. Well, that's an incredibly good start. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? I can yeah. put them in the van and go home now. Yeah, well, there that's, you go. We've that's just good. peaked. Right, let's carry on downstairs. What a brilliant, brilliant find. Mm. Just love those. 
All right, so where's right. next, bud? We'll go across the... All the unrestored stuff's across the way here. The, this shed directly in front of us is just odds and sods and bits that we use for restoration in here, so... Knick-knacks. You never know. But there may be something that you see that I've forgotten about. That... That's catch oh, my eye. There is that. That is old. So when we had a shop, we have we just go. We used to have a shop, and that was in the shop for years. We sold glassware out of it. Old glass. Yeah. Yeah. The glass hasn't been changed. Obviously, it has been stripped. But for me, sort of stripped pine was a fashion, and we used to do it. You know, we used to sell this stuff. But now. <sighs> I, I, I just can't get near it anymore. I, I, I don't enjoy having it around me. No. Mm. No, it's just the, 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 the paint. Yeah, it's, it's all about it's the paint, there. isn't it? It's when they've been stripped. As soon as, I, as soon as I wax something up, it doesn't fit in with my stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know? I'm liking what you're buying, though. I'm liking what you're buying a lot. I've come here and I've found a guy who's just buying with his eye and his heart and the head's in there as well but I mean he's buying what he likes. She got a big shop counter or something. Yeah well this is an old shop unit from Douglas it's part of so it did have a base originally. I was gonna say have you got the rest of it? I haven't it? got the rest of it no that's all I've got. Are these the shelves for it? Those are two of the shelves out of it yeah. This mahogany shop fitting would have hung on a wall above a shop counter. It dates to the mid 19th century and is missing the original mirrored back and some of the side shelves but with considerable restoration, it's worth about £1,000. I like the depth of it. Mm, yeah. It hasn't got the bottom section, which would be the drawers, but still, for retailing, it's great. How mm. much is that? Uh, that... Uh, mm. Rough and ready. It's, it's not the best thing in the world, but it'll make a nice thing. Yeah. £200, I can go for. It's a, it's a lot of my stuff is potential more than anything. That's got potential. Yeah. Shame hasn't got the base for it, isn't it? There we go. But, uh, somebody bought. Somebody wanted the base, didn't want the top. So what can you do? Hmm. Is that your best on that one? Uh, yeah, yeah. I could do one seventy-five, but not really, because it is. It just has. Potential. Potential. All right, well, yeah. I'll pay that for potential. Right, thank yeah, you. Thank you. I'm buying a project there. It's a sort of kit of bits, missing half the bits, so we've just got to put that back, and then it will sell. Now you own it. Shall I fish that bit out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next shed, please, bud. Yeah, we're moving into the restored, finished off stuff. Oh, here we go. Price is going up. Price is going up. <laughs> Lack of interest, you see. <laughs> Spud keeps telling me, oh, we can't sell sort of edgy stuff here. It's got to be, you know, pretty sanitised, which is not what we do. Um, so I, I don't hold out a great deal of hope, really, for the show. Oh, this is lovely, Spud. Who oh, puts this together? This is this really nice. This is my, nice. my wife, Marie. She does the artistic nice. side of things. She makes a Nice, nice, mm. nice shop. Mm. Blimey, uh, Charlie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Spud found this huge early 1920s Art Nouveau mirror frame in an old cinema in Douglas. It would make an impressive statement piece even without the mirror and could sell for about £2,000. Every now and again, something just knocks you off your feet and you think, well, I've got to buy that. I cannot leave here without buying that. It is special. It is different. It is outstanding. It is bigger, better, odder, stranger and more original than any other one I've seen. When I walked around, I knew you were coming. I said, what's he going to see? What's he going to see? And that was top of my list. Uh, just and I'm just very, interested to see if it was Very that. interesting. Mm. God, imagine if that had an old mirror in it, old, old decayed yeah. mirror. You'd be talking yeah. three, four thousand quid. You would. Minimum. Would, yeah. Yeah, for me here. to pay for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just need somebody with the cojones to, to yeah. take it on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. that's really stupid. It was just <laughs> too much of a risk to buy a mirror. For me to buy a mirror and put it in that, I thought, well, I'm going to pay six, eight hundred pounds and I'm going to be stuck for another three years. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You're way better off just selling that as it is. Yeah. Can't see a price on it, Spud. I need to get 500 for it just, just, just because it's so beautiful. Mm. Mm. But then you're a thousand pounds before you start. Yep. And then you're moving on from there. And then you've got to sell it a vast mirror and it's also missing its bottom. Yeah. 
I put a cheeky bid. You can try. Three fifty. No. Um, I'd I'd go to four. Four is the best. I, I wouldn't go below that because it's just it looks great there. And it's a great sold. Thank you. Thanks, bud. Definitely a hard sell. But all I need is somebody with some imagination to take that on. And I think my client base will. Oh, buddy. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Spud, just two of the best things I've bought in ages. Oh, well, that's nice to hear. T. Hello. Hurry up. Very <laughs> hefty, isn't it? It is. Ah, I brought you a chair so you can sit down properly. Look at the paint. The pair of chairs I bought today from Spurs. I've really made the trip over here, and it's the best thing I've bought. That's it. And his taste is interesting because he won't touch stuff that's got much done to it at all. Here, it's very hard for us to sell a lot of that. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so Thank much. You very much. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Best yeah. find on the island. Great. Well, that's nice to know. It's been a great trip, and those chairs have made it even better. Cheers, bud. Yeah. Great. Thanks Take very much. It. Yeah, it's been a really, really good experience. Really enjoyable. Did you enjoy that? Oh, that has crowned this little trip over here. Just exciting, interesting pieces. Three excellent buys. Yeah. With money in them. So we've, we've done well on the Isle of Man, then. Isle of Man's been good. Surprised. What I wanted to happen, happened. So I'm very, very pleased. Very pleased. Before they say goodbye to the island, there's some unfinished business to complete. Pair of bantams. Oh, fantastic. Not quite TT speed. But still, a fitting end to a fabulous week on the Isle of Man. Hello, come on. So have you had a good week? Superb. These are very, very old. They're mid-19th century. And they're chairs that are only made in this style on the Isle of Man. Aren't they fabulous? That's so unusual. So unusual. Oof. They need some work, but nothing too drastic. They need conservation more than anything. Shop counter or back bar. Oh, I see. Would have had mirrors in here. Yeah. Which I want you to replace. So, Gav, strip all this old paint off, French polish it, over what's there. Yeah. Put the repairs on. We've got all the pieces that have come off, haven't we? Love that. I love selling into sort of retail and pubs, and that's definitely got pub written on it. 175 quid. That's superb. Thank you very much. Yeah, well done. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this. Oh. Look at that. That's brilliant. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? That's lovely. Yeah. I think it's a donation box, sailor box. They did yeah. small ones right through to full-size ones. Uh, never seen one before. Oh, that's great. Seen yes, them in put books. put a penny in your pocket. Because then we've got the pièce de résistance, as they say. Careful, T. This yep. is so exciting. <laughs> Wait to see this, boys. Golly. No wonder you said pièce de résistance. The original as well. Yep. Jekyll. Yes. All original tiles. Not a crack. Nothing missing. Bang on. 220 quid. <laughs> Fantastic. You've done so well. Good, isn't it? Mm. We haven't spent a lot of money. Mm. I like that. A few days later, back in Conway. 
the team are hard at work getting all the Isle of Man antiques ready for sale. The shop counter is the biggest job. Gavin starts with a power wash. Then the whole thing needs a fresh coat of polish, a major undertaking for an item of this size. Dust it at the bottom, four of an inch at the top. Later, it's fitted with a new mirrored back. That looks better. Meanwhile, one of Drew's purchases has quickly found a new home. At a tattoo parlour in Rochdale. Mike Taylor is partial to mounted skulls and took a fancy to the Isle of Man goat's head. Uh, I've been looking for something like this for a long time for the studio wall and I've not seen anything like this. And then I spotted it on Drew's website and it just ticked all the boxes. So I had to have it. It definitely had my name on it. It's not to everyone's cup of tea, but I love it. As for the shop counter, it's been fitted with two new custom-built shelves and also brackets to hold them in place. It's a very precise business. Good as new. Imagine that all lined up with, with uh, beautiful glasses. Fabulous thing. The Isle of Man trip, it's been expensive with hotels, the ferry costs, diesel. But financially, because the price points were lower over there than they are on the mainland here. There's some really, really, really good profit there.